Hello and welcome to Systems Documentation Techniques, our chapter three. This chapter is critical actually. Documentation is key in AIS. You need to have proper organized documentation. And you need to actually do quite a few process flows and process flow diagrams to ensure that your AIS system is behaving as you would like it to behave. So our learning objectives here is you will learn how to use data flow diagrams, DFDs, again, more acronyms, because you want to understand how the information flows through the system and how the document does. What several organizations do, and I've been um, guilty of this, is you don't actually process flow your your procedures, let's say, for submitting an invoice or for making a payment, and then you realize that you're actually doing it quite inefficiently. So we also like flowcharts to understand what's happening at each stage. So documents are what we flowchart or processes, and we follow that document or we walk it through. So the walkthrough, similar to what you might do in um, auditing, when you're testing auditing, you're testing the process. Well, here you're doing it in your own AIS system. You walk the document through the system to ensure that the proper authorizations are there, that the proper internal controls are there. For example, if you are an AR person, you don't have access to AP. Then you want to use these diagrams to see if evaluate the current system in your current process, and if not, if it's effective and efficient, continue it. Possibly, more often than not, you will probably find out that you're doing things inefficiently, that maybe the document is moving back and forth through three departments when it can just stay in one department to approve it, or better yet, you can do a workflow, and that workflow within AIS will automatically send it to the proper people that need to approve it. So the whole purpose of documenting these AIS systems is, as accountants, we need to uh, be able to read this and also we have to understand how the system works right as i mentioned earlier auditors need to assess the risk and since your ais system is part of your accounting then that risk has to be assessed in total for the system also now sarbanes oxley and if you will recall that was enacted in 2002 it requires now management namely the ceo and the cfo to sign off um, and to assess the internal controls and then evaluate that assessment so not only do the CEO and CEO now have to say under SOX, yes, we have internal controls, but we've actually assessed them and they are functioning. And then additionally, we want these um, documents to be, the system to be documented so we can change it, right? If you have a good systems documentation or a data map as we call it, then that data map shows you where, what fields are in and what information is stored in each of the modules within your AIS system. So if you wanna make a change, you know exactly what's feeding off of which fields. For example, if you enter an invoice in the customer area, so under a customer under your AR module, that's also recorded in the general ledger. So these documentation helps us understand all of that information. Data flow diagrams are the most common that we use. And basically here, you're just pretty much flow charting out the process, right? You're seeing where you get the information. So your sources are usually documents, whether electronically or hard copy. And then where does that information go? Where is it stored? How is it backed up? So data flow diagrams gives you a very simple way to kind of map out the process. And then you can do it very high level and then start digging into the details. Remember the doubles and the details and seeing what happens to that process. So these are basic di uh, data flow diagrams. You need to be able to decipher these, right? So here you have a data source as a rectangle. You have a data destination. You have data flows. You have where the storage of the data is, and so you see destinations are the same, and then the circles are your process. You will be working on these in your homework and um, in several projects, so you wanna make sure you understand how the data flows, and then where the data is stored and where it comes from. So it all starts right here. So some guidelines for creating data flow diagrams. First, you have to understand the system, right? So you have to inquire about it, walk the information through. Then you wanna make sure that your data flow diagram truly represents what is relevant. You don't need to include everything. And this is where most students struggle. And I did too in industry that I wanted to include every process, but is every process or is every step in the process really relevant to the revenue cycle? 
you start very high at level. So we do top down here and then you see how the data works within entities, whether inside and outside the organization. Then what you would do is use additional data flow diagrams for those details. So you'll have, for example, a higher top side revenue process. And then within the revenue process, you may have a customer authorization uh, if they've exceeded their credit limit, for example. You also want to make sure that you have basic elements and of several groups and make sure that those elements have some descriptive names. Okay, use action verbs. You know, we update the invoice at this point. It gets prepared at this point. We are validating the journal entry before, before we actually post it. And then you have a numbering system. After all, this is accounting. So you want to have this numbering system to make sure that, I, like say, and the data flow diagram should be able to speak for itself. I should receive your data flow diagram and be able to follow it entirely, know the abstract, know the details, and know exactly how the data is working and what type of data it is. If it's a data storage piece, if it's a process or decision point, or if it's the source document. Then after you do all that, there's a constant stream of editing, reviewing, and refining until it's actually implemented. And then when it's implemented, you may change the process along the way. So be sure that you go back and change your data flow diagram. Flow charts are also another um, tool that we use. And here we call them inputs and outputs. And then information activities is our processing. We still have the same data storage and data flows, but here we'll have decision steps. So what do we, we need to make decisions at a certain point in time. Okay, do we approve the customer that has exceeded their credit limit? If yes, then it goes back to um, accounts receivable to issue the sales invoice and to issue the pick ticket so that the items can be picked off of the shelf and shipped, for example. What we like about flow charts is it's really easy to kind of get a handle on everything in terms of decision points, right? So, and it also shows us anything that's manual or automated process. I am a big proponent of automating, right? Let the computer work for you. You work smarter, not harder. And then if it is a manual process, you want to make sure that there's controls around those. And even with the automated processes. So here are the flowchart symbols, and this is a critical piece here. You need to identify these documents, right? And if you have multiple copies of documents, that's an issue. If it's an electronic output, what electronic data entry, you're uploading maybe a CSV file. The actual process itself that the computer does, your manual operation might be here, you approving the actual invoice, the database, the tape, the paper files, and then your procedures, here's like a page connector, an off-page connector, if this is a terminal a workstation, let's say, and here are your decision points and diamonds. So please be sure you know this, you will be preparing some flow charts um, within your homework assignments. So become very familiarized with that. You can use, in this case, Lucid Chart is a good flow charting package, Visio as well. Also Word has um, a pretty robust and even Excel also can have some pretty decent flow charting tools. So please, you know, take advantage and check those out. We have types of flow charts, documents, flow charts, system flow charts, and the whole entire program. So the document here, you're taking a source document and then you're pretty much you evaluating the internal controls of it. So you get um, an order in, what happens? The order, you know, the, the, maybe your order entry person checks to make sure that the customer is in good standing. Uh, doesn't owe any money if they do some other steps are taken for example maybe trying to collect or getting or sending the order on cod and if not it's all great then perfect the order gets approved it get, starts getting processed and the um pick ticket goes out to the uh, factory floor okay get this lamp and give it to the customer systems basically give you the entire processing cycle for whatever you're doing. So if you're running a um, AR aging, for example, and you used the end of the month date, let's say 1231, then there's a process that's associated with that and that's what that does. And then the program itself is just your sequence of your logic, what the system is doing in order to complete that process for you. So when you are drawing your uh, flow, flow charts similar to your data flow diagrams, right? You have to understand the system. Same thing, you've got to understand the processes, the documents, and the program itself. You want to start organizing your flow chart so that way, and it's usually top to bottom uh, or left to right. So please adhere to that. So you either start, it's either vertically or horizontally, but that's how we start. And then all your elements, right? Make sure you have descriptive names so that I could follow. And then as your data flow diagrams, you have to edit, review, and keep refining the process. 
So business process diagrams is another visual representation. And now it's basically so that any business user can understand the process. So uh, from a standard notion. So we call that business process modeling notion, BPMN. And here you're showing like maybe a full unit of activity. And for that very similar um, uh, charts and diagrams, but here you'll see the start and the beginning are circles, the activity, the same decision point. These are the same in both the flow chart and the business process diagram. And then your flows are a bit more like an annotation flow as opposed to like a direct flow or a direct data flow here. So here's your payroll. Here's a good example for payroll, right? You start um, from, you receive the time cards. So this is our source document. Right, and then you prepare the paychecks and the payroll um, summary. Then you prepare the payroll tax report. And then once that is prepared, you actually get the checks and you approve and sign the checks. You disperse the checks and you forward the vouchers and then um, you update the general ledger. And you see there are names here and different processes. Normally what we do instead of names is we use titles. So that way the flow diagrams does not have to get um, updated constantly. So for example, for Susan, she may be an accounts payable. So accounts payroll, accounts payable payroll processing clerk, for example, would be what we normally do. Then in a new employee in HR, this may also be part of the AIS system, or it may be a separate system that feeds into the AIS system. So when you have a new employee and a new hire, HR may have them complete the employee change form, maybe their benefits, all of that information is kept to continue to update the records. And then the employee records are what we validate against the time um, sheets or the time cards to what we paid. And now you see a lot of key terms here, our business, make sure you have the acronyms as well and be in, most importantly, the different flow charts that are provided. Make sure you have that and you understand um, all of these pieces because you'll be working quite a bit with data flow diagrams and flow charts. This